The mix bus, the two bus, whatever you want to call it, sooner or later you're going to have to send your tracks through it. Here's a few techniques that I use at the Crates Motel in the box on the mix bus. Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Now I've been really excited about making this video because this is a question that I get asked pretty much every day from YouTubers, my students, fellow engineers, musicians and producers. And that is what do I do on my mix bus? Now I use a top-down style of mixing, which means I mix through compressors and EQs and all the processing right from the very start once I've got a balance in the mix. And that comes from the analog days when we used to mix through the compressor and the EQ on the analog desk we were using. So in today's video, I want to run through some of the techniques that I use in the box on my mix bus. Now remember, there's no right or wrong here, so don't be afraid to break the rules, experiment and have fun. So let's jump in. So let's get stuck in. This is a track that I'm working on at the moment. I've got a balance pretty much right, but I just want to double check. Now it's, it's one of my own tracks because I didn't want to use somebody else's track and run into copyright issues later down the line. So I'll just play it. You can see I've got no processing on the drums whatsoever. I've just got the balance right on the faders. I've got a filter, a sidechain filter on the disco sample just to give it a little bit of a pump. I have a little bit of processing on the vocals because the acapella is a little bit ropey and I also needed to change the tuning of the acapella. I have some reverbs and some delays here but at the moment none of those are being used, they're just switched on. And this is the position I like to be in when I start my mix bus processing. Now the reason why I mix like this, the top down mixing style, is because in the analog days we used to mix for a compressor and EQ right from the start because we didn't have limitless compressors and EQs like we do nowadays in the box. So we just kind of got used to the sound and colour of the desk, how the compressor and the EQ sounded, and I've just carried that through into the box in, in the digital age. So now we've got the balance right, let's run through some of the techniques that I use on the mix bus. Now I use various different compressors and EQs and techniques depending on the song, it's all source dependent. So let's kick off with a technique that I've been using quite a lot recently with the FabFilter C2. Now before we really get stuck in, there's one thing I just want to point out. When you do any kind of processing in mixing or mastering, you want to make sure that the levels are the same when you bypass and when you have the processing running. So just make sure you get the levels right because then you're not fooled by louder is better. With mix bus processing, it's quite a subtle affair. Some of the reasons why you might want to do it is you might want to emulate the sound of a desk. You might want to uh, just kind of glue the mix together. Um, but it's always very, very subtle. So you're not really aiming for anything more than two to three decibels maximum of gain reduction. And also with the EQ, there'll be very, very subtle moves. Again, they might be moves to try and emulate the sound of a desk, like some desks had sort of naturally had a lot of bottom end on them or quite a lot of clarity in the mid range. So you might use EQ just to kind of emulate that. But remember, it's, it's, it's almost like mastering in a way, I guess. You, you're very, very subtle about what you do. But those subtle moves can make such a massive effect over the mix right from the very, very start. And one of the reasons why I like the top-down style of mixing is it very, very quickly gets me in the ballpark. And also, I found that over time, and it's almost a challenge to me now sometimes, is I use way less plugins. I, I try and use the least amount of plugins possible. So I might use two or three plugins on the mix bus, and then maybe a few on the buses, and then consequently, I barely use any uh, compression or EQ on the other channels. There might just be some creative ideas, there might be some correctional EQ or compression, but it just cuts down the amount of processing that you use and therefore taxes your computer a lot less. Now obviously the techniques that I use are going to be completely source dependent, so it's going to depend on the track. So I'm going to try several different techniques with this particular track and they might not work with any other track on the planet, but they're, they're the techniques that I think are gonna work with this track. So I'm gonna try two or three different styles out. And I'm gonna run through them quite quickly. So, you know, obviously with this video, you can stop and you can take pictures of the settings and please, by all means, copy the settings. I have no problem with that at all. Get inspired by them, change them slightly. So I'll run through them quite quickly. I might ramble a little, so I apologize for that. And I'll just crack into like different styles and just kind of, kind of do it in like a live way as if I'm streaming. So I'm going to kick off with the FabFilter C2 and a technique that I use where I compress the mid-range and then I glue it together with an SSL compressor. What's great about the uh, C2 is you have an internal sidechain. 
and you can just apply it to certain areas of the frequency. So you can hear here, I'm just going to be applying compression to the mid-range. Let's just get the levels right on that because there is a little bit of a difference. I don't want to be fooled. Probably do around about times two oversampling on this. I like the sound of that. And more often than not, I use the clean style, sometimes the mastering style. I might use the punch or the pump in on the drum bus, but to be honest with you, I tend to use clean because I tend to use this compressor on the mix bus more than anything. With the attack and the release, I'll listen to the transients of the music that I'm working on. Like I said, I don't want to squash things too much. It really is quite a subtle thing. And in this technique, I'm just really compressing the mid-range, so I have to be careful of the transients. So at the moment, the attack is probably a bit fast. So you can hear very subtly, it's just kind of compressing the mid-range and letting the top end and the bottom end kind of push through. And what it does is, it, it weirdly enough, it kind of brings the mid-range of the song forward in the mix. And it just creates movement as well, because obviously compressors normally react to the bottom end first if you don't apply any sidechain. So by taking the sidechain up to 200 hertz, it's not really reacting to the bottom end at all. And bringing the sidechain down to say 2.5K, it's not reacting to the hi-hats or any high-end signal. And then what I would do after this is I would apply uh, an SSL style compressor. Uh, I'm going to pull up the, let me see, let's pull up uh, the SSL native bus compressor. Now the reason why I use this one is because it's got oversampling and it's really, really clean. Now sometimes I'll use the UAD G bus because it does actually have a real kind of analog emulation character to it. It does actually sound a lot like the SSL disc I used to use, which is why I love using it. It also has a mix knob on it as well, so I can blend the dry with the wet, which is something I do quite a lot on the mix bus. But the reason why I like using this one is it's very, very clean. There's not really any kind of analog emulation or noise that they've added in or extra harmonics or anything. So it's really, really good to add on to another compressor. And the purpose of using this compressor is to just kind of glue the whole track together. So it'd be very, very subtle what I do with this. Again, I'm gonna have uh, uh, about 30 on the attack, very short release, ratio around about two. These are pretty standard um, on an SSL or a VCA style compressor for a mix bus. Again, I don't really like to compress anything below 150 to 200 hertz, so I've brought the side chain up here. You can see actually this is my default setting on this. Um, I'll switch between two and four on the oversampling, generally four, maybe two. I'll just, just listen, you know, I mean, it's, it's about your ears. Don't just think, oh, it has to be four, or it has to be two, and get into the habit of it. You know, those knobs are there for you to change, so change them, just use your ears. What I might do is I might pull that back a little bit to give me about four decibels of gain reduction. So that sounds quite squashed now, doesn't it? Kind of like pop style, radio style. But it's a bit too much. So what I would do is I would then pull back the mix knob. Between 50 and 75% normally I find is a pretty good place.
And that for me just really glues everything, but you know, it, it's compressed, I can hear it's compressed. And that's the kind of sound that I'm going for on this mix. That kind of uh, almost over compressed French disco house kind of style. Um, so I probably, I probably am pushing the compressor a little bit harder than I might do on another track. But like I said, it's always source dependent. Well, let's just try a different compressor that I would use on a different day. Um, I use the Shadow Hills quite a lot. Now the Shadow Hills compressor is available from UAD or Plugin Alliance. They both sound exactly the same, despite what some people might say. I tend to use the UAD one just because I can use the external DSP. I, I love this compressor. I don't use the optical very often. I tend to use the discrete, which is more like a VCA style compressor. I will have the sidechain filter in. I leave the optical one on. I don't really know if that makes any difference or not, but I just, I've always had it on and I like the sound that I get out of it. I use it very similar to an SSL. I will have the attack at around about 30, sometimes 10. The release will normally be on one. The ratio, two, three, sometimes four. Uh, and then I'll just dial in the thresholds to get around about one to two decibels of gain reduction. Then I will adjust the transformers to get the kind of sound that I want. Because I know this compressor so well, I know that the steel tends to give a nice rounded tubey kind of bottom end for me. Uh, and the iron and nickel tend to have a little bit more clarity and don't sound quite so warm. With this track, I'm guessing that iron and nickel will probably be the best bets, but you know, you've got to trust your ears, so I'll try all three out. I actually quite like the way iron sounds. Quite often what I will do is I would drive a compressor really far. So it's, it's giving, you know, maximum gain reduction. That way you can hear what it's doing to the transients. You can hear the style of the compressor a lot easier. And then I just dial it back. It just, it just gives me personally a more, more of an idea. Cause sometimes, especially with a mix bus, it's such a subtle process. That it's difficult to hear sometimes how the compressor is really affecting things. So just push it, you know, push it into the red, see how it sounds. Again, use your ears. So another compressor I like to use on the mix bus is the Alicia Alpha. I use the mastering version. This is from Plugin Alliance, but it's also available from UAD. Now the reason why I use this particular compressor is if I want, if I want to use mid side and I don't really want to compress the side of the signal, I just want to compress the mono part of the signal. This will be if there's lots of information going on with cymbals and reverbs and kind of stuff on the side, and I don't really want to touch it and I want to create that movement again. Uh, so I'll just compress uh, the middle of the song, the middle of the signal using this compressor. So I'll have it in mid-side mode. I'll unlink the channels. Again, I have the attack and release set up pretty much the same as I would with an SSL. I might maybe have the ratio at around about 1.7, 1.8. It's a mastering compressor, so it's very, very subtle. The attack, around about 30, 75 is nice on this one for this particular purpose. Uh, and then sometimes I'll use the soft clip. So I'm just gonna run through these different functions and see if I can get the sound that I want. So it's just compressing the mono part of the signal. And if I push this up, it starts compressing the hi-hats, etc. Yeah, and some of the signal on the sides being compressed if I use this. I kind of like that where that is, which is why I would choose this particular compressor. I don't want to affect the side of the signal.
So that's the compressor that I would use on the mix bus. For this particular song, it's probably not the compressor I would use. I probably would have stuck with the FabFilter C2 and the SSL. But you know, I just wanted to show you that this is a compressor that I do use sometimes on the mix bus. Now, something else I want to just want to go back to is there's so many plugins on offer now. You know, I mean, literally, you can have thousands of plugins on your computer. But what I've found is it's much, much better to get to really, really understand few, few plugins and just use a few plugins, completely understand them, like become like a black belt on a few plugins rather than be a white belt on a thousand plugins. That just doesn't really serve any purpose. You just get snowed under with plugins and, you know, you're not really going to get good at any of them. So I tend to stick to uh, a few plugins, almost as if I was working out of the box still, because, you know, I'm not going to have 500 compressors. I'm only going to probably have four or five maximum compressors, unless I'm in like a really big studio, then maybe I'll have a few more. But I just like to learn a compressor completely inside out, completely understand its character, understand all the functions, so that when I sit down and listen to a rough mix or a, a pre-master when I'm doing mastering, and I can listen to that song and I can, I have a listening session where I listen to the song and then I assess the song before I even sit down with any processors. And I'll listen to that song and I'll assess it and I'll think, well, you know, an SSL will work really nice on that or, or I'll use the Alicia Alpha or I'll use the Neve 33609 or I'll use the Gates STA, you know. So I know these compressors so well that I know what kind of character and color and sound they will put on my mixes or my masters. And, and that's just how I prefer to work because otherwise I've got all of these compressor plugins and limitless EQ plugins and limitless saturation plugins. And I'm not really gonna learn them if I just keep trying something different all the time. I will have sessions where I have, when I'm not working, I might take an hour out and I'll try out some new plugins and I'll push them to their limits. I'll try and break them basically, see what their weaknesses are, find out what their strengths are and decide whether, you know, whether I'm going to be able to use those in, in my work. You know, and that's how I discover new things and stuff. And, but generally, I'll go through stages where I'll stick to one compressor all of the time. And, and that will reflect in maybe the music that I'm working on at the time, the sound that I'm going for. You know, we go through phases. We go through phases where we like to make mixes that just sound really, really pumpy and really loud. Or we like to have, we go for a phase where everything's really subtle and we don't push distortion, we don't have any saturation. We, we've all been there. We all have a brand new plugin that we love. So moving on, another compressor that I use quite a lot in the mix bus is the Neve 33609. Let's just load that in. Uh, again, I tend to use the UAD version just because I like the sound of it. Archeria do a really, really good version of it. Uh, IK Multimedia do a very good version of it. There's a, there's a few versions. I just know the UAD one. I just like the sound of it. So I've stuck with the UAD one. Now for me on the mix bus, I've just learned that the 33609 it gives a really nice sort of soft, creamy, typical Neve sound really. Um, so I don't like to push more than maybe a decibel of uh, compression, gain reduction. And I'll have a very, very low ratio. Might push it to two. I'll have the attack slow. Here it's a really, it's very transparent in terms of the pumping that you would get on a compressor sometimes. You don't tend to get, you, you can get that on the 33, but it's, it's it, you have to really, really push it with high ratios, etc., and fast attack. And, but it, it's very, very subtle, it gives a really nice tubey warm sound. I mean, sometimes I'll be honest, I will have the 33609 at the end of my mix bus chain without any compression on it. I just love the sound running through this particular UAD compressor.
So that's another compressor that I use on the mix bus quite a lot. So after trying out those various different compressors on the mix bus, which will be the first part of my mix bus processing, I will then move on to maybe some saturation or a color EQ. Now I'm gonna go back to the C2 and the SSL and I'm gonna try out some saturation plugins. So I've got those compressors dialed back in. Uh, now I'm gonna try out some saturation plugins. So what I would tend to use would be something like Saturn 2 from FabFilter, I've been using that a lot lately. And also the Studer tape and the ATR102 tape, both from UAD. So let's just try out the Studer in this situation. Now what I've found on the Studer, again, it's about knowing your plugins and knowing how far you can push them and their weaknesses and their strengths and the character that you can get out of them. For me, I tend to leave it on the 456. I have tried the other uh, tape emulations, but the 456 was a tape that I always used to use in the 80s. I've just got used to it. I like to run it at about 15 IPS. Sometimes if I use it in mastering, I might use the GP9 and I might have it on 30. But for mixed bus, I tend to have four, five, six at 15. And if you're just about, just about sort of pushing to zero on the VU, that for me is the sweet spot. And what it does is it, it, it just, it adds a little bit more compression, but it just has this lovely warm sound to it. And I think in this track, it might really, really work. Yeah, that really, really works for me. So another plugin that I would use in this situation would be the ATR102 from UAD. It's another tape emulation. It's more, uh, I'd use that probably more often in mastering. Really, really good tape emulation. There's a bundle of tape, uh, the bundle of tape emulations out there that you can use for this purpose. I just tend to go to the studio. It's one that I use all the time and I know the sound and character from it. Another saturation plug I would use in this situation would be the Saturn. One of the best saturation plugins I think I've ever used. It's just absolutely amazing. I mean, what you can do with it, it's multi-band saturation. Actually, let's, let's, just, let's just put that in. Let's just see what that one's like. You can almost use it like an EQ. I, I tend to have it set to clean tube, by the way. I, I do use the other settings in other situations, but clean tube is my default if I'm gonna be working on the mix bus. Yeah. 
it's really, really good for kind of creating that console, that console emulation where you'd have that natural bottom end on a lot of consoles and it just kind of like a real tubey warmth. Really, really subtle, as you can see. And you can even reduce the, the higher ends to kind of get that tape roll off sound. Really, really good plugin. But I'm going to stick with the Studio, I think, in this situation. Let's just load that back in. Fortunately, my computer's behaving today, so things are loading nice and quick. By the way, you might notice what I just did there. I flicked over to my VU meter on my main. I, I with, um, in terms of gain staging, which I'm not gonna go into too much. There's a ton of videos out there. I might do a video on it at some point. I, when I'm mixing, I, as a habit, I just keep everything at zero. And that way I know that I'm gonna have plenty of headroom uh, when I bounce the pre-master. Just a habit that I've got into. It's from the old days again, basically. So we've got the saturation. Saturation's dialed in there. Again, very, very subtle. But for me, the whole mix is already starting to sound in the ballpark, and I've not, I've got three plugins. Two compressors and a saturation plugin. I haven't touched anything else. There's no individual compressors or EQs on any of the drums or the sample or the vocals, apart from the little bit of work I did on the vocals. So what I'd probably do at this point is I would add a color EQ It'd be a very, very general EQ, maybe a kind of back style EQ where I would do the smile, as, uh, as you probably know, where you push the bottom end a little bit, push the top end a little bit, um, just to kind of, it's a pretty standard type of thing. But again, it's very, very subtle and it will just give it a little bit of color. So something like uh, the Curve Bender from UAD and Softube, some of SPL's EQ, some Plugin Alliance, uh, the Bax EQ from Dangerous, also from Plugin Alliance. A Poltec is really, really good for this situation. Uh, the Better Maker from Plugin Alliance is also really, really good. It's one of my favourites at the moment, the Better Maker, especially when I'm working on house music, club music, hip hop, uh, trip hop, trap, that kind of stuff. It's just, uh, it's just my go-to EQ at the moment, to be honest. But I will also use a Poltec quite a lot as well. Uh, so I'm going to run for you a couple of those different EQs very, very quickly and just decide what I want to go for on this particular song. I've already got a pretty good idea of what I want to do, to be honest, but I'm going to try out a few different EQs. So we'll start off with the Curve Bender. Great mastering EQ, very subtle, gets you in the ballpark very, very quickly. So with a few subtle moves, for me, the mix just is nice and round in the bottom end, uh, has a little bit of clarity in the kind of mid range, around about 4.2, and I've put a high shelf on there just to sort of brighten up the top end. It's very, very subtle if I just bypass.
probably push the shelf up to 20. Let's try that. You see, so it's a very, very general EQ. It's just really like colors the whole track. But what it also does is it means you don't have to do as much EQ on any of the individual tracks because you've already brought brightness, clarity, and a warm low end. Really, really love the low end on this EQ. You can really push it and it doesn't sound like it's being pushed, it just has this lovely warm depth to it. Obviously I wouldn't push it that far. I'm pretty happy with that but I just want to try the better maker. Again, very, very subtle. What I love about this EQ is you have this area here, which is kind of like a Poltec. Really, really nice sound to it. You can, I mean, I've got, I've got quite a lot going on there, 1.4, 0.9. This section here, I absolutely love. The 5K on this section, if you push it quite wide, I've got it about, uh, what have I got there? It's about 1.3, 1.6, about an octave. 1.3 maybe. Just really, really brings out the middle really nicely. The vocals, the nice parts of the hi-hats, not the harsh parts, the claps, the snares. It also really opens the mix up, I found this EQ as well. I mean, Plugin Alliance have done a really, really good job on this EQ. I mean, the curve bender does that as well. It, it, it does really, really open up, gives it a bit of depth and a bit of width. But I just feel with this, this mid-range section here, it's also really, really nice to dip out around about 180, 200 on this. And just sometimes clear up the mud very, very subtly on the mix bus. I, th I think I think I prefer the better maker in this situation. I would use the curve bender sometimes. I would use just a normal Poltec sometimes. Uh, Waves Poltec's great. UAD's Poltec is amazing. The back CQ from Dangerous. I tend to use that more in mastering. I feel on this track in particular, I need to do a bit of work in the mid range, which is why for me this or the curve bender are probably better. Also, this has a great high pass. Really, really subtle curve, very nice. So let's just listen. Let's just bypass the... Uh... Now I know there's a little bit of a level difference, but if you just listen how much, how it opens everything up and just creates a nice bit of movement and a nice bit of glue, it just makes the, the whole mix just sound a bit more radio ready. I mean, that's really put me in the ballpark and I haven't adjusted anything else. There's no processing on the buses. There's no processing on the individual channels. So at this point I've got the two compressors, 
the saturation and the EQ. What I would do at this point is I would do what I call sweetening uh, and maybe some work. If there's a bit of harshness, I might use something like Soothe or DSEQ from, T for, from TB Pro Audio. I don't think there's really any need for it. It's sounding pretty good. What I may do in this situation, this is one of my favorite things, this is my little sweetening compressor, is a compressor from Drama. It's a multi-band compressor. For me, I find this compressor around about 1.5 decibels of gain reduction. It just does a really good job of thickening, thickening up the low end um, and brightening up the top end, and just uh, and, but not squashing things too much. It, it's just, it just it's a sweetener. That's why I use it for sweetening. So I will use it right at the end of the chain. There's a more in-depth version of it where you can adjust the low, the mids and the highs. But I just love the idea, the simplicity of this plugin. I know what it does. I know how it sounds. I know how far I can push it with a wet dry. I know how it sounds at the different GRs. These I'm all used to. It's just a, it's just a really, really great plugin. And uh, using it like this on the mix bus, just as a kind of bit of a sweetener to give it a bit of air and just that really thickens up the low end really nicely, but without really affecting the sound too much. It just, it just makes everything sound bigger to me. And that's kind of the job that I'm trying to get on the mix bus is, is I, I want it to sound as radio ready as possible without having to do too much work. You know, I mean, speed is the essence when you're mixing for clients. And so, you know, some people might be, you know, oh, who's got this really simple plugin? It's only got one knob on it or whatever, but, I know what this does. I know how far I can push it. I know what subtleties it has, what weaknesses it has. And I know that in this particular situation, I can just sweeten the mix a little bit and, and just thicken up the, the, the bottom end. It's just the cherry on top for me. There's actually a frequency in there that's annoying me a little bit, which I think is off the original sample. It's round about 6K. So what I might, what I would probably do is I might use something like Soothe, or I would use FabFilter Q3 and isolate that frequency and just get rid of it. Let's try FabFilter. Sounds like round about there. So what I've done there is I've isolated a problem frequency with FabFilter. This EQ is just amazing. I, I find new things on it every single day. Honestly, if I could only have one EQ, this would be the EQ I would have. Just for me personally, it does, it does everything. I mean, the EQ, the dynamic EQ, you can, you can set it up to use as a compressor. It's just amazing. And for surgical work on linear phase, 
but also the natural phase is really nice. I don't tend to use zero latency. I guess that's probably more for live work or I guess if you're streaming maybe, but these two here, linear phase if I'm getting rid of problems. The ability, the ability to be able to use this technique and isolate frequencies and then make it dynamic. So it's only taking out those frequencies when they're actually there. It isn't dipping everything out all the time. And being able to have a really, really narrow cue. Now I could do that on the individual part, which would be the sample here. So I could do that on that, but as we're doing mix bus today, I'm going to do it, I'm doing it on the mix bus just to show you how I would do it if I was in a situation where I needed to isolate a problem EQ. Soothe is really good for this as well because it, it tames harshness and you can pick particular EQs and get rid of them. And also TV Pro Audio DSEQ is amazing for that. And it's not quite as heavy on the CPU as Soothe is. Looks like there might be another little issue around about here as well. So it's very, very subtle. You're not really gonna hear it unless you're listening in headphones. But it just gets rid of some of the frequencies that will build up as the track goes on. So let's just play it with everything on and then everything bypassed. Yeah, see, so with the processing that I've done, it's all very, very subtle. And it, but it just, for me, it just makes everything sound. There's more movement in there. There's the glue compression. I've added some color to it. I've got rid of some um, problem frequencies. I've got a little bit of saturation in there to give a bit more warmth and some harmonics. And, and just overall, it just sounds wider and bigger and just more of a finished song. And I've just done processing on the mix bus. I'm gonna level match this because there is a little bit of a difference. Yeah, lovely, I'm really happy with that. So now basically what I would do is I would then, working backwards, go through my buses. I always start with my drums. I would then move on to, in this situation, in this song, the sample and the effects, and I finish up with the vocals. Then I would move on to the individual parts. But starting with a mix bus, it's already put me in the ballpark, and I just feel like I've just got less work to do. And obviously when I'm mixing for a client, I need to get in the ballpark as quickly as possible, especially if the client is sat in the studio with you. You wanna be able to pretty quickly make a few quick moves, some plugins, quickly throw them on, make the adjustments you need to make because you know the plugin so well and you know what they're gonna do. You've already assessed the track. You know which direction you're gonna take it. You know which plugins you're gonna use. Bang those plugins on the mix bus. I mean, I wouldn't print that and send it to, uh, to mastering, but it's pretty close. So there you have it. That's some of the methods that I use on the mix bus. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Until next time.